as we, we, we come, Dr. Marcus, we, we come to the clinic and uh, for the consultation uh, throughout the period of time, do they have to call to make reservations for the consultation? Do they have to register for this consultation or they just can come into the clinic? Well, they can come to the clinic, but as well if they can make a phone call in advance mm -hmm. to uh, set uh, probably an appointment for them. Uh, because this time actually we doubled the number we had last time. So uh, we're quite busy, but we are still, uh, you know, uh, uh, open for, for, for more appointments, absolutely. What's the telephone number? And the telephone number on? is 562-6932. During your practice, because uh, you, you do an array of stuff, the, 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 we talk about people with hypertension. Yes. Okay. And... Uh, you stressed on a very interesting point. Yeah. I was just talking to Dr. Schwartz in our drive this morning that I do get a lot of Antiguan, that uh, a very nice uh, uh, type of patient who tell me uh, the pressure is very, very high, but don't worry about it, I'm stressed out. And I tell them, okay, mm -hmm. but your pressure is 170 over 100, and that's very high. Are you taking any medication? No, no, no. I'm fine, but I'm just very stressed. Once the stress go away, I'll be fine. Now the patient I, tell him the doctor yes, this. Okay. Yes, I tell him, okay, well, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, the heart doesn't know that you're stressed, okay? The heart does not know? It doesn't know that you are stressed. Mm. So the heart now is pumping against very high pressure, and that's going to cause enlargement of the heart. It can cause problem in the heart. So either we deal with the stress or you let me take care of it with medication. And actually, I brought this point to, to Dr. Schwartz today uh, that uh, um, Antiguan, Antiguan patients have their own thinking sometimes yeah. regarding how to deal with some condition. It's not just the Antigua people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so that, but that, it's funny that, that I, I'm a patient, I'm coming to you. But I'm still telling you I'm okay. Yes. And uh, they're telling you the reason why they think they have high blood pressure yes. or hypertension. Yes. Now, now, here we go. What do we tell patients like that? Well, for the high blood pressure question, it's very important. The, um, the nickname for the high blood pressure condition, it's a silent killer because it can do its damage without the patient being aware of it at all. So we can have patients run around all day long with blood pressures of 170 and 100, and they actually feel fine, they can do their daily chores, and they can have no symptoms of awareness, but their mortality is clearly higher than people whose blood pressure is brought under control, either by lifestyle or by medication. So the end organ damage, stroke injury, heart injury or kidney injury are all associated with chronic high blood pressure that's left untreated. And if you're able to take care of it earlier, provide the second opinion for people. I have several of my own patients mm -hmm. in my practice back in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I had a lady about two weeks ago who had a serious problem. I recommended a management strategy for her. She said, I'm just not quite comfortable with this. Would you mind if I go up to the Mayo Clinic, for example, to have my case review there? I said, of course. That's absolutely appropriate. And I actually contacted the physician at Mayo, represented that patient's data to that physician, and we were able to come to a consensus. And now with my openness to willingly accept mm. a second opinion on my primary opinion, the patient was much more comfortable that I wasn't just railroading them down a management strategy for my benefit or for my university's benefit, trying to get some procedure out of them without them being comfortable with what we were doing and why. So the fact that they can communicate with their Mayo Clinic second opinion, who validated my approach, everybody was comfortable with the process and the patient's gonna get their optimal medical care, which is of course what we're looking for in the first place. So folks who are just joining us, Mr. You can prevent a number of these consequences of long-standing high blood pressure, which is a good thing to do to prevent a stroke, to prevent a heart attack, or to prevent kidney failure. A lot of folks in Antigua and Barbuda, <clears throat> and I can spoke, just speak for Antigua and Barbuda, is that for the, we have a tendency to be afraid of going to the doctor because of what we may be told is wrong with us. How do we work around that? Because you keep telling folks you need to check up, you need a visit to the doctor. Well, education, education, you know, uh, and really assessment of the risk for heart disease uh, early on will definitely uh, increase the patient's survival and decrease their, their risk of having a heart issue at an older age. Um, and I would like to bring a very interesting point that I, I, I face day in and day out in my, in my practice uh, that 
I'm also a chair and professor of uh, pharmacology at uh, AUA. And Dr. Schwartz also comes as a visiting lecturer to give uh, uh, clinical cardiology uh, pharmacology lectures. And we are facing in Antigua with a, a very interesting issue that medication are not good for you. So I see a lot of patients said, I stopped taking my medication. Why? Because I read or somebody told me that it, it, it affects your liver, it affects your kidney. And I tell them, okay, do you think I don't really uh, uh, know that or I don't worry about you? But I always weigh the benefit and the risk of the medication. So if I tell you to take those statin drug, the Lipitor, a lot of patients said, oh, I stopped that medication. I'm having muscle pain from it. I said, first of all, we need to make sure that you have muscle pain from it, not from something else. And then let's see how your cholesterol is. Because now your risk of heart attack is increased 10 times when you stop this medication. So heart attack or a little bit of muscle pain. And if you really have muscle pain from the drugs, we can change it to something else. But don't stop your heart medication because that will decrease your survival. But Dr. Marcus and Dr. Schwartz, when you listen to those commercials on the television, it simply, when I hear all that, I say, wait a minute. All those things are possible by I'm utilizing all these medication the symptoms, the things that are possible, it can be frightening to a small society. Because you watch the same commercial that we watch, but of course the fact is that they still need to come in and, exp and you explain to them what are the pros and cons about these uh, side effects. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and one of uh, um, the most interesting cases that we're facing that I always uh, uh, consult with Dr. Schwartz about is patient come with flickering of the heart. And most of the time, the flickering of the heart can be a lot of reason, but mostly the valve is leaking. What's a flickering of the heart? Well, flickering of the heart is a regular beat of the heart. Mm -hmm. The top part of the heart mm -hmm. is beating a little bit too faster and irregular. So the blood is not flowing in a normal, regular manner. And the patient can feel that. Now, the problem with the leaking valve is if it's left untreated, it can cause a blood clot, mm -hmm. and the blood clot can cause a stroke or a heart attack. So it is really uh, 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 interesting to measure exactly how much leaking it is. And if the case is a good candidate for surgery, repair of the valve, to stop that, or we put the patient on medication. Mm -hmm. And there is a pros and cons for surgery and medication. And I would like Dr. Schwartz actually to, to highlight this because every time I send him a case and he discuss with me, tell me, okay, this patient is a better candidate for surgery, this patient is a better candidate for medication. Dr. Schwartz? Yeah, so to take home the point that he was talking about here, number one is uh, in my career, I've never forced anybody to do anything they don't wish to do. Our job is mm -hmm. to help them understand what their medical condition is, what their risks are, and discuss with them the treatment options that are most available and appropriate for them and give them some guidance on how to proceed. If they choose not to take the primary recommendation, that's fine by them as long as they understand what the uh, consequences are. But usually if they have a good doctor-patient relationship with us, they will follow our recommendations. And what Dr. Marcos was talking about is a condition called atrial fibrillation, mm -hmm. an irregular rhythm at the top chambers of the heart. And in some patients that does put them at a higher stroke risk and they need medications to bring that stroke risk down lower. The medicines that are used is a heavy duty blood thinner for it. And of course, if you're on a blood thinner, you're gonna be at higher risk for bleeding problems. And when you see the commercials on TV, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, they say you could have a risk of a bleeding problem. Of course you could because you're on a high blood thinner. Mm -hmm. But what you're trying to do is prevent the stroke consequences of the atrial fibrillation. And you have to have the honest conversation with the patient. Is your risk of bleeding worse or your risk of stroke worse? And how would you like to balance those two against each other? And then what's right for the individual, whether or not that patient should be put on medication.